Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at the activity ratios. This is part four of seven of the financial statement analysis series. In part one, we looked at the introduction to the financial statement analysis. In part two, we looked at horizontal, vertical, and common size financial statement. Part three, we looked at the liquidity ratios. And in this session, we would look at activity ratios. Activity ratios measures how efficiently and how effectively assets are being used. Now, how, why is that important for accountant, auditors, analysts? Well, we have to know how efficient or how effectively from an investor's perspective, before we invest in a company, the company is using their assets. Now, from an auditor's perspective, studying those ratios will help you determine if something is out of whack, something does not make any sense, or if it's if it's a red flag area where it needs further work. And we would look at it when we look at actual numbers. We would explain this concept a little bit better. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to switch to the Excel sheet using the same figures that we used for the prior session, illustrating activity ratios. So this is the balance sheet we're going to be working with, as well as the income statement and those financial statements, they can be downloaded from farhatlectures.com from my website. Starting with activity ratios, we're going to be looking at account receivable turnover. Well, how do we compute account receivable turnover? We're going to take net sales divided by the average account receivable. The first thing you need to ask yourself is why am I dividing it by the average? Well, net sales is an income statement account. It's for a period of time. The income statement figures are for a period of time. Account receivable is a balance sheet account. If you divide net sales by ending account receivable, you are dividing it by the end of the year one point in time versus the income statement is a period of time. Therefore, to compensate, you're, you're going to have to take the beginning account receivable plus the ending receivable dividing by two. And this way you have an equivalent denominator to the numerator because the numerator is for a period of time. Therefore, if we look at the figures here, if we take 2,250 divided by the average account receivable, simply put, if we go to the balance sheet here, here are the receivable. And what we did is we take year one plus year two divided by two. We come up with a figure of 5.28. What does this figures mean? Well, it means you sell and collect your receivable 5.8 times per year. So if this is the year, so one, two, three, four, five, point two eight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 0.28. What does that mean? Well, it means you sell, you collect your money. You sell again, you collect your money. You sell again, you collect your money. 5.8. Now, do you want to be this to be high or low? Well, you want the turnover to be high. You want to be selling and collecting your money as fast as possible. Well, is this a good number, a bad number? Remember, in ratios, you really don't know you really don't know why because you have to compare 5.28 to prior periods see in the prior period are you doing better or worse or you have to compare yourself to a to a competitor now from an auditor's perspective when you look at 5.28 and last year was six uh, let's assume it was four 4.0 well you well one, one of two things happen well, they're collecting their money faster or they're selling less on account or a combination of these two. Well, you need to you need to see if that makes sense or not, because now went from four to five point two eight. Now, to translate this into how many days on average we get, we're going to take three sixty five, which is the number of days of the year, dividing it by account receivable turnover. Now, certain textbook, they use three hundred and sixty days. Just we're going to be using three sixty five. Again, this is the number of days in a year divided it by the account receivable turnover. It means it takes on average 70 days to collect your money. Simply put, you sell, 70 days later, you collect, you sell again. So each one of these semicircle is 70 days. So again, is this, a, is, this, is, this, is this good or not good? We really cannot answer. We have to look at, put it into perspective. Now, obviously, average collection period you want it to be low now typically 30 days is a good thing and lower is better so the average collection period the lower the better why because it means you are collecting your money earlier the sooner you can collect money the sooner you have that cash for other activities again from a, from an auditor's perspective if this number fluctuate a lot from year to year well you need to find out what's going it's either it has to do with sales or account receivable and you have to understand that this is unusual because they should have a a uh, 
a relationship between two. There should be a predictable relationship. So before you start, you, you, you start auditing the company, if you think it should be 5.28 and you computed it and it's 5.28 or approximately 5.35 or something like that, close enough, well, it seems it's as predicted. You still do work, but it's as predicted. But if you computed it and it's much higher or much lower, then there, there's more work to do. That's so. This is how you manage your receivable. Another asset that we can measure is inventory turnover. How well you, ma you manage your inventory. How do we compute this? We take cost of goods sold, which is an income statement account. And guess what? We're going to divide it by average inventory. Why? Because the numerator is an income statement account. And if we compute it, we find out it's 4.15. What does that mean? It means you buy, you sell, you sell all of your inventory. 4.15 a year. 1, 2, 3, 4.15. Okay. So you buy, you fill out your shop, you sell it, you sell, you sell all, you do this 4.15 a year. Okay. Now let's translate this into, into how many days. We'll take 365 divided by inventory turnover. Now we want the turnover to be as high as possible. We want it to turn over as many times, buy the inventory, then sell it, buy it, and sell it, so on and so forth. But to measure that, we'll take 365 divided by inventory turnover. It looks, you're selling your inventory every 88 days, 87.99, we're gonna say 88, and for this, we're gonna go with 69. 69 days to collect your money, 88 days to sell. Now, now you want the, they sales and inventory as low as possible. For example, a company like Apple, they have a, at some point they had seven to 10 days. I'm not sure what's the latest for them, but around seven to 10 days, they sell their inventory. So if you go to an Apple store, you go and you walk inside, you look at everything on the shelves. On average, when you come back a week later, week to 10 days, everything that's in that store was already sold and replaced. So they turn over their inventory very quickly. And that's what you want. So let's do a quick exercise to show you what I mean by if it's out of out of the norm. Let's assume you expect the ratio to be 4.15 and it was 4.15. But let's assume the inventory for the company was rather than 321. When when you computed the inventory, it was one, um, let's make it 110. Just for the sake of illustration. Now what's going to happen to the ratio, it went up to 6.38. Well, we said it should be around 4.2 to 4.3. And now their inventory turnover is 6.38. Well, they should not be selling their inventory this fast. Well, it could be that they're understating their inventory. That could be a reason why this happens. They are understating their inventory. That could be the reason. So that's why the, the ratios, they help us understand if there is something unusual with the company, if there's something unusual. It, that's how it helps auditors. Accounts payable turnover, we're going to take cost of goods sold, divided it by, again, average accounts payable. So in other words, it's going to tell us how long it's taking for us to pay our, to, to pay our payable. Well, we pay our, we pay our payable, basically the same concept, 7.7 .7 times a year, or on average, every 47 days, we send a check for our payable. Again, is this a good thing, a bad thing? Well, maybe that's the norm in the industry. Maybe this is this our relationship with our uh, with our creditors. It, take, it takes us. This is a month and a half. We pay them every forty five days. Maybe that, that's the norm, or it may not be. Maybe they want us to pay early, or maybe the norm is sixty and it's month and a half. Regardless, we have to put it into perspective. Now, taking those three ratios together, we can compute something called the operating cycle. And the operating cycle is taking days days in account receivable or average of receivable, which is this number here average collection period plus days in inventory. And that's gonna give us 157.1 days. What does that mean operating cycle? It means from the time we buy the inventory until we sell it, it takes us 87 days. So if this is 0 0.0, we buy the inventory, 88 days later we sell it. After we sell it, it will take us an additional 69 days to collect the money. So those two together, 88 plus 69, that's going to give us 100 and 157 days. This is called the operating cycle from the time we buy the product until the time we sell it. 
Now, there's another another formula that we we need to be aware of. Sometimes you 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 get asked about is called the cash conversion cycle. The cash conversion cycle is basically taking the operating cycle and deducting from the operating cycle days and accounts payable. And the days and accounts payable we pay every 47 days. Now, what does that mean? It means the cash conversion cycle is 110 days. Let me show you on a timeline how this all looks like so it makes sense to you. The way you compute it is average receivable collection period plus days and in inventory. This is the operating minus minus days sales and AP. Well, this is day zero. You buy the inventory and you have to pay it 47 days later. You have to pay here. So you have to pay right here after 47 days because this is how long it's taken us. Then at that point, we did not sell anything. By that point, it's going to take us up until day 88 until we sell. What does that mean? It means after we pay for it, after we pay for it, it took us the inventory set on the shelves for 41 days and we really did not did not do we could do anything just waiting after we paid for it that's a long time but it could be in some industries then after we sell it it took us 69 days until we collect the money until we collect the money now let's think about it so what does that mean it means this period here let me just use a different color 41 and 69 if you take 41 plus 69 will give us 100 and approximately 110 days 110 days so our cash conversion cycle from the time we pay and the, until the time we collect this money is 110 now we want this to be as small as possible because think about it on day 47 and day 47 we pay then it took us another 110 days to collect that money because we needed 41 days to sell it and 69 days to collect Again, this is really skewed in favor of the supplier because the supplier get their money and it's going to take us 110 days to sell and get our money back. But again, it could be a product that could be the norm. For example, as I told you in the prior session, Walmart will have a shorter. <laughs> Basically, Walmart will make the supplier wait for their money. It's the opposite. But that's the point. So to compute it, you will take average account, how many, how many days it's taken you to collect plus how many days it's taken you to sell minus days and accounts payable. Why? Because days and accounts payable, it's they're waiting to be paid. Therefore, you're gonna deduct this. You're gonna deduct this 47 days from the whole from the whole time, from the 157, from your collect, from your operating cycle. I hope this makes sense. Last but not least is the asset turnover or total asset turnover. This is another efficiency ratio, and it's selling us on average how efficient are we using our total asset to generate sales how do we compute this we'll take sales and we'll divide sales by average total asset again why average because sales is an income statement number and here it, it gives us 0.76 what does that mean it means for every dollar in assets we have we are generating 76 pennies in sales for every dollar in assets we are generating 76 pennies 76 pennies are we efficient not efficient. Does this make sense? As an auditor, you might have some uh, expectation before you start the audit that for this industry, it should be 0.6. Why is it 0.76? Are they increasing their sales or do they have less asset? Are they being more efficient? Or is it a combination of these two? Again, this is how analytical procedures will help you pinpoint red flags, red flags in the audit. What should you do now? The best way to learn this is to go to farhatlectures.com and work multiple choice questions. At the end of this recording, I'm gonna remind you again, invest in yourself. My supplemental resources will help you understand the material better. Before we proceed, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I can help you pass the CPA exam. I don't replace your CPA exam. I am a useful addition. I can help you in your courses by understanding the material better. My motto is saving accounting students and CPA candidate one at a time. Invest in yourself. I have plenty of resources. I explain the material differently. This is a, this is a list of my course catalog, including intermediate, managerial, advanced, financial, you name it, tax, governmental. 
my CPA resources are aligned with your backer, Roger, Gleam, and Wiley. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I give you access to all previously AI CPA released questions, and that's 1,500 in addition to thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation, like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit.